So hi everyone, I promised I'm going to give you a walkthrough of what's happening on the boat and then also give an explanation on what I'm doing so that it makes it simple and everyone can understand what's happening. So today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of what are the plans for things on the boat and all the projects that are going on and then as I get to them, I'll start releasing videos showing how it's done and if you want to do it on your boat or if you find yourself on a boat someday, you can probably do it yourself. So here there used to be a three burner gimbal stove with an oven um, which is out now and this area becomes a battery compartment it's going to be waterproof and I'm going to have just a small stove in there which is only for boiling water because I'm going to eat all freeze dried food and I'm going to carry some goodies but it's not going to be I won't need a proper stove for it and I won't be making any bread so uh, it's going to be easily accessible it is going to be above the waters so it's not in the bilges that it'll get wet if, it, if the bilges get filled so it will be accessible easy to repair and check on anything that is going wrong and then the control panels are going to be on that side which is going to be really easy for doing anything this area of the boat is the companion hatch uh, so this is basically from where you go inside and come outside of the boat uh, it generally is just two doors and it slides on. The problem with that is that when it's heavy seas and there's water coming in, uh, water can go inside uh, the boat, which you want to avoid. And that happened to a lot of people in 2018 race. So what I'm doing is I'm going to seal up the entire place. This is a honeycomb core and I'm going to use polyester over it and just glass it in and then attach it over here in the companion way. Uh, I'm gonna make a big hole over here um, and put a door, uh, a watertight uh, door, which is in sailing terms called as a hatch. Um, so with that, what happens if there's a big wave coming and I'm going to go inside, I just go inside, close the hatch and there's no water going in. It's going to be in here and then there are ways from here that the water is going to go out. So that way this is going to be very secure uh, and uh, it's going to be dry below in the, in the, on the bad days. Yeah. Uh, so what Nagarjuna is doing in the cockpit lockers here is taking out all the old hoses so that we can put new hoses and because a lot of through hulls are going away from the boat so uh, we don't need those holes anymore so we're going to plug a lot of holes. And a lot of food in there are cold. So before this refit, the boat had nine through hulls under the water. I'm going to remove all of them and plug them up. And this is going to be the only one left. This is the water intake for the engine and I'll connect the water intake for the sink also onto it. And that's how I'm going to get my water to wash dishes. So this is the starboard side. Um, in boat terms, it's the right side of the boat. This is where I'm going to be sleeping. This is going to be my permanent bunk. Uh, there's going to be a cloth coming up, which I'm going to hang on the ceiling. So basically if the boat tilts around, I get caught by that and I don't fall over. Um, so this is going to be where I'm going to spend most of my time when I'm not sailing and sleeping and under that is tanks and then there are uh, small cabinets over here which uh, I'm going to be using elastic and cloth to cover up so that they are easily accessible instead of uh, the covers, uh, instead of doors uh, and they're not wooden and they don't hit me in the head when something goes wrong. So welcome to the Weaver. So the, as DGR regulations ask, the front of the boat will be a crash bulkhead. So that opening there is going to be covered up and sealed tight completely and we'll have you know, so a small hatch to look in to see what's happening if there's water coming in. Uh, but there's also a, a sea cock, uh, which is basically like a tap. Um, running down, uh, which with, with a pipe running down all the way going to the back into the bilge so that any water that fills up over there goes there 
and there's also a bilge pump in in here which can just take out all the water um, this area used to be a sleeping area for two people but now it's going to be my sail locker all the nine sails that i'm going to carry are going to be here and then all the extra ropes etc that i need for the race are going to be stored in this area So here there used to be a very beautiful butterfly hatch uh, which used to open up for ventilation but I don't need it for the race and it leaks. So this has been taken out and covered up by one inch thick core and a lot of fiberglass and this is going to be uh, where I'm going to put my solar panels. Uh, so they are going to power char charge my batteries on the sunny days and when it's not sunny I'll have the wind generator to give me power. There's this big hole over here. Uh, it's the front uh, hatch. So it, that is how I can access all the sails easily. And probably just, it's an escape hatch also if anything goes wrong in the back. Um, this used to be covered by a wooden hatch. Uh, but again, it's heavy, uh, it's old, uh, it's not completely waterproof. So I'm changing that to a brand new aluminum hatch, which uh, is going to be covering this area. See the hull, it's been sanded down to the gel coat. Uh, I'm going to sand it a bit more and then apply two coats of barrier coat, which is basically epoxy based to keep the water out. And on top, there are going to be five layers of copper coat. Copper coat is an anti-fouling, which lasts a long time and it's more environmentally friendly than most of the ablative paints. Ablated paints basically wear off uh, to give anti-fouling, whereas copper coat only uses the copper inside it to avoid growth on the boat. And it's a hard paint, so I think that's going to add speed compared to everyone else who's going to use an ablative paint. 